Greetings, and welcome to episode 13, part 2 of the Spiritual Path series. Yesterday we got into the more religious side of it, and how the negative aspects of the religious side of it, and how that creates contrast for the spiritual side of it. And today I want to get more into the negative parts of the spiritual journey versus re the religious journey. Uh, yesterday was very passionate. I got very passionate at the end of the video. But today I'm going to try to get just as passionate, but I'm going to try and expand on some of those uh, ideas I was presenting in episode 12. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, round two. Here we go. So yesterday I closed out by saying, uh, upgrade your operating system, reread your books, and that's just that's not just religious people, but spiritual people also. Uh, read, reread, reread, and keep rereading. Anything that has a profound effect on you deserves a second and third and fourth glance. Don't just snap on to something read it once and call it good. I don't care what book it is, if it has truth in it, you missed something because you were expecting something. If you're reading it a second time, you're not really expecting anything, but you're going to find something. You're going to make connections and you're going to read the same words, but you're going to make connections you didn't previously make because you didn't have the information you needed to make those connections in the first place. But the second time you read it, the third time you read it, the fourth time you read it, you'll have the tools to get the job done properly. So, now moving on into, now, uh, episode 12, or should I say part 1, it, uh, it, it seemed like I was bashing religion, and I wasn't. I bashed the way religion is presented. I bashed the way religion is treated today. Uh, as a political tool, I bash the way people don't question it. How can a moral person think that it's right to hate somebody because a book said so and not think that a man put that up there? That's the things I'm bashing. But there's things I bash about the spiritual path. I noticed that, uh, and I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, <laughs> but I noticed that they're on the spiritual journey, the conscious community, the, the spiritual community. There's a lot of name dropping. There's a lot of uh, book dropping. There's a lot of, I'm not going to give you my bibliography. Find your own way. I'm giving you a map more than a GPS. I want you to get where you're going, but I want you to figure out, you know, Hey, what's that over here? Hey, what's that over here? When you have a GPS, you don't look anywhere else. You just go where you're going. So, yeah, I don't want you to follow my bibliography. And I've read a lot of good books, and I would love to just say, Here, read this, read this, read this. But I want you to experience your journey through your eyes, through your steps. Don't experience your journey through my journey, because then you're really just experiencing my journey without the benefit of the actual physical experiences. Because... Some of the things I've done, some of the books I've read, might not make sense to you if you haven't experienced what I've experienced in life. And, and I'm not talking about all the deeply spiritual stuff. I'm talking about even the mundane moments. How did I react to this? Oh, I saw a mouse. How did I react to that? Oh, I saw a spider. You know, just little things. I had an episode about two or three episodes ago, how there's no such thing as an ordinary moment. So even the mundane things count, but they were my mundane things. And without everything to put into context, from the mundane to the super spiritual, giving you my bibliography might not make sense. Giving you every step on the journey might not make sense. Uh, but I can get into that in another video in another series down the road a piece. 
hopefully I'll be doing this for a while. But anyway, negativity, the negative aspects of the, of the path, like name dropping, book dropping, uh, some people emphasize pseudo experience over experience. Oh, read this, do this, you'll, you'll be fine. To an extent, do some back study. Research that book. What led them to that book? What other books did they discover they should read when they read that book? Okay, they met this person. Who led them to that person? What other things did they learn surrounding that person? What, that, what way did they go off after that? You know, Because each person experiences it differently, your experiences might not have ever led you to that person. And if you run off and seek, seeking that person, you might be altering... Because granted, you can go back. You can go back. You can double back. You can stop right where you're at. You can do whatever you want. It's your journey. That's how it works. But I don't know. I get the distinct sensation. And I don't know if any of you get the same feeling that we're running out of time. And go see what you can see. Take your time. But hurry up. <laughs> That's what it feels like. It's, it feels to me, and it's felt like that for years, that we're running out of time. Whatever's going to happen is getting closer. I'm not going to ring end of the world bells or rapture this or that, but I'm saying whatever's coming is coming faster than it was. And we really don't have the luxury for detours anymore. But that's not to say you can't veer off the path, but if going that way takes you all the way out in the round rather than sticking to your path I would say stick to your path because for a lot of years I I had the luxury before the feeling got so intense that I had to hurry I had the luxury of meandering way over there and way over there and a lot of my study involved uh, quite a bit of anthropology digging into languages cultures architecture to discover which way it went in terms of uh, 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 a spiritual philosophy or doctrine or, or practice whether it be meditation or the kundalini or the chakras I was able to track it from its origins to where we have it now through just you know what similar architecture and and yeah they could say well that's kind of vague and random but Every one of my theories that I came up with was validated later because someone would pub publish a paper, some noted doctor or scientist would publish a paper saying, yeah, this is, we found this, and that tells us this, 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 and this, and I'm like, right on. So, yeah, study your lessons. I mean, don't just point out a book. If you're going to point out a book to someone, point out every book you read that led you to that book. Point out what personal philosophical discoveries you made in your life that led you to that book because they might not be there yet and then I've one thing as I've noticed that really trips me up is jumping the gun learning something I either didn't need yet or didn't need at all because then it gets you off in the wrong direction and not everyone is here for the same thing so if you get somebody off on your path for what you're here for they're going to be missing out on what they're here for and then they've got to backtrack all the way back to their path to get it back. And any other time in history, I would say, that's the spice of life. It's meandering. But like I said, it feels like we're running out of time. And that's another thing. That's a whole other episode. So we'll get into that sometime later. Uh, try not to steer each other wrong. Try not to steer each other in the wrong direction. We've had enough of that over the last few thousand years. Uh, but the spiritual path, it's harder to see the negativity because it's easier to stay away from. I'm not surrounded by it. I don't have to go to a church to receive what I know from somebody else. I don't have to adhere to a strict form 
set down for a 2,000 year old culture and cultures that were centuries older than than they were still I don't have to I don't have to worry about any of that so there's far less of it not because it's not there but because I get to choose where I go no one's telling me who are you to question God I'm not questioning God sir I'm questioning you you claim to be the mouthpiece of God I've asked you a question you think you know the mind of God yeah I kind of think I have a just tiniest crumb speck beginning and a few more of these pieces and I'll have a key to unlock the door so that I can see the tiny little piece that I earned <laughs> you know what I mean I am not far along at all but I understand enough to know that if I am a piece of the entire hologram then I know that the hologram works in some small part the way I do the way we all do so and that's where I get that reverence for the self over a priest because if I don't believe in me to have my connection I'm not having a connection I'm having a priest who has a connection or claims to have a connection but we fall victim I've, I've read many stories of people falling victim to the spiritual path people claiming to be enlightened masters and are really just snake oil salesmen. No different than any priest that anyone's ever put down. I'm looking at you, Mr. Phelps. <coughs> that was horrible. <laughs> but you, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, people that have been mistreated, abused, uh, used for money or whatever. Uh, and see, and then you're getting into the very things that put you on the path in the first place is well I don't feel like I should have to worship a man but then you set up and it's in you to do this and I don't know why set up someone on a pedestal so you could say oh that's what I want to be like and I'll never be there <laughs> you set yourself up for it and see people religious people think that it's all I don't know I guess that we're just we're just lazy religious people that's what spiritual people are they just don't want to get up and go to church it's not that we don't want to get up and go to church it's that we found it that if the body is the temple if the heart is the temple here right here if that's where God resides I mean there's so many passages that I could quote that say it's kingdom of heaven is right here <laughs> then we don't have to go to church and that's kind of lazy for you to go and get your spiritual doctrine and path from another person but we when we go get it from another person I don't know how anybody else does it and this is the negativity I was able to avoid the negative aspect of the path if I see someone who's in a place where I want to be I focus on how he got there or she got there and I keep walking I don't look at them and there's plenty of people that have just like getting abused by a priest and I'm not talking about inappropriate touching I'm talking about a priest so full of his position in the church that he'll take someone that's on the right path and take them right off of it just by telling them you know you don't have the right to question God oh okay that's power that's misuse of power someone so close to the truth that they're asking questions which is what you're supposed to do oh excuse me shouldn't be put off of the truth likewise you shouldn't use the truth to manipulate people to get what you want like that's the danger of the spiritual path it's uh, in my opinion that's even worse than in the church because then you've got religious people using the truth using the gifts that were put here by the Creator for us to learn and you're using this to get over on other people and I'm not talking about you wrote a book or you monetize your videos on YouTube there's no sin in making money but when you're literally and 
purposefully bilking people out of their money, their time, or maybe you just want a cult following going on, that's wrong. That's wrong on more levels than I can ever lay it down on to the church. Because I think, in my opinion, that's probably how the church got started in the direction it's going. Oh, these people believe so wholeheartedly, they'll do whatever we say. And think back to when it was just a path. You had the Essenes. Remember the Essenes? They followed Christianity like we follow the spiritual path, but they didn't worship Jesus. Jesus. They practiced what he preached. And then they turned that into a religion. <clears throat> the same thing is what they're doing. Only because they don't own a bank, it's, it'll be a cult. They're starting a cult. It's one thing to be a teacher and just to teach. Here's my two cents based on my experience. Enjoy, take it where you want, take it over there, tear it apart, put it back together, do your own research on it. That's what I would tell you to do. Anything I say, anything you've learned from me, take it out and test it. Get a book and see if you, I mean, learn the techniques. Uh, do you feel the same way? Do you think the same way? If not, don't just discount it because I've done this before. I heard some things I didn't really appreciate, so I went out and tried to find out where he got this inf this information and why he uses this information in the method that he does and why this person thinks the way they do. Because if you can understand the person or at least their point of view you can understand why they hold this whatever truth as truth. But using your position to usurp control over others I mean, you're, you're usurping this person's free will. And granted, you could argue, well, they're doing it, they're giving it up willingly. Yes, but if you had not pretended to be someone or something you were not, they would not have. If you're really not a teacher and you're just a manipulator, then maybe don't sully the spiritual path or don't sully religion by using it as a control mechanism because there is no one person that ruined religion it was ruined from the onset as soon as they decided that they were going to spread it at the tip of a sword they ruined it they ruined it for everyone and like I said in the last video that particular operating system should still be valid it should be I mean keep it up to date yes but it should still be valid because if you read it properly it says in there how to establish a connection to source and how to maintain it but people don't focus on that part you're not taught to focus on that all you're taught is Jesus was born Jesus died for your sins focus on him don't focus on what he said because then you might get confused and think for yourself. Focus on the fact that he lived and died for you, for your sins. And anything you do is forgiven because that man existed and I, wow, I have issue with that. I have issue with that. But on the same token, I'm telling these people, take responsibility for your own journey. But on the same token, you have these spiritual people who will find a guru or a teacher or a master and they'll put their entire spiritual well-being and the responsibility of their journey in that person's hands and then when they get abused they're gonna cry foul because well you 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 must use my trust you're yeah but you, you still have to take responsibility for your actions on the path. That's the whole point of the spiritual path is to have the freedom to have the responsibility to take back the responsibility of your life to not think that there's, there's constantly someone looking over my shoulder so I can't sin. No, you don't need to think that way. Likewise, you don't need to think I found someone better than me so they're now responsible for me. 
And I don't know where people get that, but I don't care who you meet, how far along the path they are. I don't care how far along the path you see me as compared to your journey. I will never take responsibility for your journey. That is on you. I will, but then likewise, I'll never put you in a position to compromise your trust or the responsibility you have taken for your journey. So that's, it's a moot point as it concerns my role in your life, but not all the way around. It's not all the way around because there's no, none of these techniques are bad. I, none of the techniques I've learned on the spiritual path are bad. Not one of them. Not one of them has rules, 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 rules. None of them are set to create neuroses or psychoses in a person by saying, look at the world, it's beautiful. God gave you this. God gave you every bit of this, but don't touch any of it. No one's ever going to tell you that. Because your whole purpose for being here is to experience the wonders that the Creator put here. Why else would He make it so wonderful? You don't build Disneyland and say, stay off the rides. What? No, no. Ride the rides. Ride every ride. Ride them twice. That's what God wants. He needs to know. He needs to know. Which is the whole point of this. He needs to know. There's something about this, about us, about the experience of being human on this planet, in this corner of the universe, in this galaxy, in this solar system, that he wants to know about. So he said... Poof, people. <laughs> and granted, it's not that simple and it didn't happen that easily, but nothing happens by chance. That's the one thing I've noticed about the universe. And that's something that the religious path and the spiritual path have in common. There is no such thing as coincidence. Nothing happens by chance. Synchronicities, yes. Seemingly unconnected events, yes. But everything happens for a reason. And I believe that the reason that we're born from day one curious about everything and it never really stops is because if we're born in his image and we're a piece of the hologram and that's probably one of the most driving forces in my spirit is my curiosity maybe the creator is a bit curious maybe there's something that he has yet to experience and it's only to be found here because if we would have found it we wouldn't be curious anymore <laughs> see the religious path doesn't give for curiosity and to an extent it keeps you safe by relinquishing responsibility of your journey you get a subconscious failsafe that says as long as I believe I'm going to make it I'll give you that they knew it's like somebody knew they had completely screwed it up and so that they wouldn't send everyone to hell on accident they scared. They put in that failsafe. All you gotta do is believe in Jesus. Please believe in Jesus. Pray to Jesus because He died for your sins. And if you believe in Jesus, you'll be saved and you go to heaven no matter what. They had to put that failsafe in because of the way they teach it, and because of the way they teach it. If they hadn't put that failsafe in, we would all right now believe we are going to hell if we were all Christians. Think about it, because we've all sinned one way or another. And if Jesus didn't die for your sins and already pre-forgiven, then we're all going to hell and there's nothing we can do about it. And to prevent that, they had to put, side note, if you love Jesus, you're saved. <laughs> anyway, there is some, there's comfort in the, in the religious aspect. In the religious path, there's comfort, and that comfort comes in the safety in numbers. Because there are people that I'd like to get my hands off and put them on the spiritual path because they are so devout and honestly on the path, they just happen to be part of a religion. 
it's not that they're not on a spiritual path or on a spiritual journey. They just happen to be part of a religion. And I'm not saying I'm completely devoid of religion. I'm What I'm saying is I'm not a Christian. I do not adhere specifically to the Christian doctrine, the Hebrew doctrine, the Muslim doctrine, the Buddhist doctrine, any doctrine. But that's not to say that there are not bits and pieces of religion within the program that I run. It is just not the basis of the program. It is not the operating system. The operating system says source and then builds out from there. I view the religions more as a history of the culture that spawned that, re that religion in the first place because if you can tear down myths and legends there's some lot of interesting stories in there and I'm sorry they just cannot just be discounted out out of hand because like I said there's things about that book that you don't know that you don't know and if you took the time to go and study that book you would find that there's more truth in there than people give it credit for it's just taught differently if I have this awesome book that everybody all seven billion people on the planet agree is chock full of nothing but truth a hundred percent truth but I focus on the sleeve of the book and the author we're, that what are we gonna do we're all gonna give praise to the author and that's all we're gonna do that's all and that's where we went wrong teaching it wrong if someone would get hold of it and teach it properly could you imagine oh we could move mountains <laughs> And Islam, and they say, well, what about Islam? Islam says the exact same thing as the, uh, 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 as the Bible. The Quran says the same thing as the Bible, except for the parables are different. They're, the parables are based on the culture of the time that spawned the Quran. The same thing with anything that has a tone. Judaism. There's truth in all these books. And they're all based, well, see, I can't say they're all based on that book because Christianity is based on the previous one, which is Judaism. Judaism is based on, uh, if you look back further, Judaism is based on the, the old religions of, of uh, uh, what do you call it, Samaria, and some people would say even back further to Atlantis and Mu and all those. But we're going to stick with in the context of the religious path which technically started with Christianity we're gonna go back to Christianity because those that's the one we are immediately at odds with or that I'm immediately with at odds with because it has it it, it doesn't allow you any freedom of expression whatsoever even even the Hebrew faith allows he uh, freedom of expression just not so outwardly but, yeah, like I said, there is that warmth. There are those people, that warmth of, in the safety in numbers, those people that are truly and deeply spiritual and have a connection to source beyond the church, but probably keep it to themselves so they're not ridiculed. Those are the people I want to get my hands on. Those are the people I want to say, you know... Please start telling people. <laughs> you know you're supposed to take responsibility for your actions. You can't just put it off on some guy that died 2,000 years ago. I don't care if he was the son of God. That's not why he came. That's not why he died. Please help them. <laughs> That's what I want to say. I want to grab all of you people that know better, that aren't about the hate, that aren't about the, if you're not in this book, then you not shouldn't be on the planet kind of people. I'm about the spiritual path. No names, no labels, and that's why. No more taste great, less filling. You're either on the path or you're not. I don't care if you carry a book. I don't care if you carry a religion. You're either on the path or you're not. And if you're using your position to hurt people, whether you're a priest or an ascended master 
or guru or any kind of spiritual teacher if you're using your position to harm or teach falsely to get people to follow you so you can control and manipulate then you're wrong and that is to the detriment of the spiritual path and religion and yeah we need to we need to we need to really look into this because it is that in my opinion it is that important that light gets shed on these more negative aspects of both of these paths because maybe just maybe we're all drinking from the same well and all preaching the same thought but because they're doing it out of a book and we're doing it straight from the heart there's a point of contention there anyway we're getting about on to the 30 minute mark and uh, I'd like to say I liked this video I, I didn't get as passionate as I would have liked but it, it was still still hit the hit that spot hit that note uh, there's definitely going to be another video for this series. I am, I might just run the series for the whole week and there might be five episodes. But for, for so far, there's definitely going to be three episodes. So I hope you join us for episode three. So I want to say that if you like this video, please click the like button. Favorite it if you want. And if you would like to get more info or just like the sound of my voice. Go ahead and subscribe. But until next time, you hang in there.